Hello, we are here today. We are going to speak about a different topic because it is about ethical washing. So the main question, it is, is ethical washing dangerous? We are the winners of the Ethics in Finance prize and part of the alumni of Observatory of the Finance. So today we are going to try to answer the question and the first, Cristobal, you could answer that question. Thank you very much, Larry. Actually, by uh, asking, uh, is ethical washing something dangerous? The first thing that comes to my mind is uh, what is our definition for ethical washing? This word um, kind of mimics what you have heard um, in the uh, world of environmentalism, which is called green washing. And it is when a corporation is trying to use a um, kind of marketing and um, showing to the audience and the consumers that they are abiding to an ethical um, moral uh, behavior regarding being more um, uh, aware of the problems of, of, of the climate change and environment. And it has been critiqued that some of those practices are really uh, little affecting to to the world of climate change so one is left with the question aren't they just using the word uh, ecological action as a way of marketing but aren't they really working on on what is uh, or great concern which to do real and great changes and impact for the world so ethical washing which is mimicking that phrase uh, refers to the same thing. Are corporations using the word ethics in a way that present themselves to their potential consumers as a company that are doing what is good and what is fair, but in, in true, they are just doing uh, marketing, maybe because of uh, uh, think of uh, image or reputation. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I'm, I can recall what we have been mentioning in the last episode which was uh some uh, financial institutions we were which were uh, providing services for the elder people or people with wheelchairs or with people who had um, physical disabilities and they started to use technology to help them and and use these uh cellular applications to help them but what was happening is, if this is true, that they were trying to help those kind of people which were excluded from society, what happened when there were some people which were not uh, technical savvy because they were not able to use a cell phone, they were not able to use uh, uh, an online uh, banking services, and they were excluded? The question then there was, uh, if those institutions were truly seeking those people to to bring them uh, bring uh, for them the financial services, why aren't they also educating those people to include them? The flavor is that they are only um, bringing their attention to those potential consumers that really were going to represent um, a client or a services or an income. Um, and by the opposite uh, token, those, let's say, maybe elder people which were not able to represent that kind of um, financial income, maybe they were excluded because they were not interested to the system. That That is the question. So is it possible to find in finance some behaviors that apparently they are looking for the good of people, but uh, in the real sense is they are just looking for the for the for the income, not for the person. And, and here I can recall also there are some debate uh, in philosophical terms. And then after me, I'm going to pass the word to a truly philosopher, which is Mateus Poland. And this debate is when we have regulation, can we say that the corporation that follows that regulation has already fulfilled everything that is ethical? So for example, paying taxes or or uh, complying with any regulation on, on climate change that could be imposed. 
maybe the company says, I've done whatever is in law, therefore I've done everything. Don't ask me for anything else. I, I am from the point of view which says that, yes, following what regulation says is ethical, uh, for sure, considering that most regulations should be made for ethical purposes. But I also think that there's something more uh, about ethics, which is not only about regulations. And I will finish my, my, my presentation on saying that um, actually one of uh, the, the paper with which I, pr I participated in the, uh, this price of Robin Cosgrove uh, Ethical Trust and Finance, which is a proposal on, uh, on trying to make it visual for people on how their behavior affect others. And I departed from a, a so-called test called Wall Street Journal test, which is try to imagine yourself, don't consider other people, uh, but if, if you what you are doing tomorrow is going to be presented in the first page of a major journal, let's say Wall Street Journal. And if you think that what you do is something that is going to be concerned and, and is going to be critiqued and you, you will feel shame, don't do it. That means maybe there's a space there where there's no regulation, where there's no one seen at you in which you can say, mm, maybe this conduct, this behavior is going to affect others. I won't, I won't do it. And even if there's not publicity on this, if, even if there's not marketing on this, or it's not going to be appearing in the final report. Now I pass the word to the philosopher Mateusz from Poland. Thank you, Cristobal, for uh, this, this great introduction and, and uh, starting uh, lots of topics, lots of points to, to unpack here. Um, I, I think I, I will start from, from your direct re re reference to philosophy. Uh, of course, there is a ethical sense that says that legalism or following the rules, different kinds of deontological ethics is uh, that that says that following the rules is enough. It's it's what it makes to be a moral is just to follow the rules. Uh, to be honest, personally, I and I think many uh, modern ethics ethicists believe that it's not enough. You need to do something more, something additional. That ethics is about relations and care and uh, and helping other people. And uh, the rules are sometimes even the rules that are imposed on us can be against or can. Uh, restrict us from helping others. So there are many cases when the rules are pre preventing us from doing some good we could do if there were, weren't our, instead of, of the, 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 the rules, we could do some more good. So then that's just one example, one case, but moving to uh, ethical washing and is it dangerous? I, I think that uh, there, are, there are three, uh, for me, three crucial points here. One is uh, what you already mentioned, what is the what is the core motivation uh, to use the uh, to use ethical regulations? Is it just to make profit? Is it just because we are obliged to and the rules said us we need to do so? Okay, so we will fulfill them, or we have some deep, deep moral motivation to do good, and just and that um, those rules not are imposing the, the moral uh, moral action on us, but this is. There, it's more like creating the space to to do what we already would like to do, that we have some deep motivation to do this, and these rules are just just allowing allowing us and creating some space to to do the right thing. So uh, that that are possible views on this from from my point of view. That's one point from I would say institutional level. So we have uh, creating space for morality, and I believe it's good. It's not a dangerous, but then. We have the another level is the level of individuals. Still, we have uh, the, the another question is what the core, core motivation of the of the CEOs, of the workers, of the accountaries, of, of the um, stakeholders, and so on. What are their motivations? Do they really also follow this uh, policy, follow this institutional approach? And uh, that's important because there is no set of rules, no regulations, no ideal system that cannot be subverted by bad will. 
there are also some loopholes, some holes, some ways to uh, use it in your own interest or just to create some more profit for the company. So that's also the, the question of the individuals that are, that, that are within this institution. And the last point, uh, I, I think it's important to address, there is also a standpoint that we may say that um, any kind of uh, any kind of ethical regulations against free market. So the free market extremists would say that there is, of course, there's a danger of uh, greenwashing uh, and it's by creating some ethical or ecological regulations because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, entangling with the, with the free market mechanism and it's dangerous. For example, there's a discussion about uh, ESG in taxonomy and how it will work, and there are some worries that it will uh, it, it will be uh, regulating the market very much. So there's always a worry from the from the uh, free market extreme point of view that any kind of regulation is dangerous. So then the greenwashing wouldn't be a danger, but it will the creating of ethical or ecological regulation will be. Uh, creating this mechanism and the, the, the free markets means is that it's well you you just <laughs> ask for it <laughs> is that the way is the way it works so now to simon oh, thank you well there, there were so many points uh, which have already been mentioned <laughs> in this discussion uh -huh. and i would like to add one point regarding um well the more practical view or the, the view of the customer um, because I think ethical washing might lead to the fact that people might buy things they don't want to buy, actually, or they might support a company that they don't want to support. So um, I would like to put the focus on, on the responsibility of, of the clients and the customers, um, because I would su su suppose people want to act responsibly, but sometimes they are not able to do this. Um, because sometimes it's not easy to detect ethical washing. Um, and on the other hand, sometimes that's something I do, I suspect ethical washing, although there is none. <laughs> I don't know if you, you might share the same view maybe. So for example, um, I bought a t-shirt last week <laughs> and it said, or the label said, um, if you buy this t-shirt, you will save 400 liters of water and you will support um, the local community in, in a town in Africa. And I thought, oh, this sounds good, but there was no more information. And um, I went home and I looked it up in the internet, but there was no further information provided by the company. So hmm, I think, yeah, what is really necessary is, I mean, this might be true, of course, but it is definitely necessary for a company um, to, to support their claim with more data because otherwise you will never be able to, to um, distinguish between ethical washing and um, ethical yeah, good behavior in a way. So um, yeah, that's, that's my point and um, I think that's really important um, to, to maybe, I don't know, talk to the companies or communicate more to make people act more responsibly. Okay, thank you. And Lele, what is your point? What, what is your view on this? Thank you so much. I think that all of the views are really interesting. Uh, I have quite similar idea here because my question was that it is not that important what we are doing. It is more important about how we are doing or why we are doing. So because of that, I have checked some of the ideas that you have been speaking about before. So you have mentioned some of the purpose. So I think that that's one, it is the point here. If we have the ethical washing, one of the purpose, it is because marketing purpose, because income purpose, it is because of the money. But all of the second one will be about the regulation. If it is non-voluntary and it is because it is mandatory because it is a regulation, the rules of the, of the, of the, uh, of the action change. And 
Also, I agree with Matthew that say like the core motivation, why we are doing that one, what is the real motivation? And here we have check, we could review many different stakeholder view or individual view, or also like Simon has mentioned, the responsibility. So because of that, when we are speaking about ethical washing, maybe we need to take into account the information we have mentioned before. It is because we need to trust the people what it is doing, but more why it is doing that one. The integrity, it is more about the line between the individual that it's doing something and why all of the process make the result. And also because of the coherency, not only about the individuals, but also the corporation or the institution in which all of the things they are working. So because of that, it came to my mind that it is not only about the actions, it is more about the reasons we, and we are speaking about ethical washing. We need to try to review, check, communicate or establish with what are the most important reasons because that's make people different, company different, institutions different. So I don't know if you have some questions or we finish here. Okay, Christopher, you your time. I do. I was thinking like, well, maybe this is an episode with a tricky question at the end, but this is not the exception because this is a kind of paradoxical question. Do you think, do you think uh, that I mean, let's grab, I, I really like this idea that you were mentioning, like you are going to say that you are doing um, this action, please provide more information, please communicate uh, what are your real motive uh, reasons. Do you think should we pass a law, a regulation that obligates companies to do that? This is the paradoxical because if you make the obligation, it is a normative action. And they would do it because uh, there's a regulation. Or should we prevent doing regulation on, on ethical uh, information, not to call it a washing? So this is a question with no, uh, no, uh, no one has the true answer, but what would you think of making regulations on obliging people or companies that bring uh, information on, on ethics? Uh, should they follow some rules or not? Okay, if I may, <laughs> I think that's a very good question, tricky, <laughs> as you said, there's no universal answer, but I believe that uh, we need to put some regulation because uh, I, be I believe more in regulations than in free market and that will it will emerge some, some in some magical way because um, I believe that free market generates more uh, more individual, more egoistic behavior than altruistic. So I believe mean, we need some regulations. We need to have uh, some boundaries of the regulations, and we need some kind of encouragement to the to do the good things. But one of the crucial things is to not overregulate, not to put, not not to. Uh, made everything uh, compulsory and to create, I, I believe that the best regulation is those that create space for good behavior and and just give a small, small, small nudges, p p pushes to, to, to do the right thing, not just, not those that uh, put the mandatory, uh, uh, very strict, very regulated behaviors, but I believe that we we need more mandatory information, we need more mandatory uh, communication uh, of motives and so on, but uh, but I'm also aware that we should be really, really uh, conscious not to over-regulate the, the, uh, the market, the institutions. Yes, I think that the balance is the important point. So too much information, it is not good. Too much normal norms of regulation, it is not uh, very good. So I think that maybe we need to back again to people relationship, because if we want to analyze the reasons, not only about the action, not only about if a corporation has an ethical code, it is why they have decided to uh, accept that ethical code in that moment. It is because there is a recent 
relate to marketing, to Gong, or why? It is because really they want to change the motivation of the workers, their clients, their suppliers, or whatever. So maybe we need to try to remember balance. And also the second point, it is back to people, back to relationships. Yes, um, I totally agree. I just think that um, it's always the question when you talk about regulation, who is going to regulate? And uh, is it going to be government or the state? Or maybe um, it could also be the market. I mean, if, uh, if a company is able to show hard data and hard facts, then maybe other companies will see that and they will see that they have to do the same thing. So maybe this is a little bit too optimistic, but uh, <laughs> Maybe, we never know, maybe it's going to work. <laughs> Thank you so much. We will see you the next time. <laughs> bye -bye. See you, bye. Bye, guys. Nice.